The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? One, two, three, four. It's the start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed. It's ripened into a precious friendship. It feels like life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Oh, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Oh, it's better with you. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy, and that triple clap was to prove that the era of the clapper is no more. Funeral for a friend, episode 638. Goodbye to the clapper. 694. 695? <laughs> Griffin, do you want to go? 634. 637. Griffin, do you want to go? 612. Justin, beat the clap. Griffin, do you want to do? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm Griffin McElroy. Um, I'll say greetings to Travination, uh, but this is just a... The moves <laughs> you cool. could you could intro me like a herald. Okay, sorry. Let me take that again. Okay, I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy, and introducing presenting. <laughs> sorry, one uh, presenting. It's not an introduction. They know. Yeah, me. they know me too. Could you do like presenting? That's what you do with like and introducing sure, sure, Haley sure, sure. Joel Steinfeld. Yeah. Okay, here, let me try. Let me try one more time. And I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. <laughs> The Roots and Storm. This is not introducing you. This is like playing your music so you can oh. run out on the court okay, through a big yeah. picture of yourself. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. So me and Justin are going to hold up a big picture of you. Okay. You're back in the locker room, but you're uh-huh. fucking ready to rip. Okay. And introducing Travis McElroy. da 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 Hey, what up, Trav Nation? It's me. Woof, woof, <laughs> big dog, middlest brother, Travis so McElroy. It's winter in Trav Nation. More like Darude Snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because it snowed me? a lot. It snowed a lot this week in a lot of places What does in that the have country. to do with Jason Derulo? Yeah, why is it Jason Derulo-centric? Is this a cat's riff? I don't like, understand. Derulo Snowstorm? Darude. Oh. Darude. The Darude made the song You're being Darude. <laughs> Hold on. Have you guys, you guys know about <laughs> okay, Griffin, you So your gag there was p- predicated on the basis that Travis and I would know the name of the song oh, you got, oh, you guys or are artist s- that you, guys you are were so singing behind your hands. You guys are so in the wrong right now. <laughs> because you we guys are, named that m- mouth fart? <laughs> me and every other one of our listeners is over here on this side of the yard and we're fucking partying and we're saying like, <laughs> Is this your favorite Darude song? You two are on the corner like, man, I don't know who Darude is and nobody does either. Go me. It's called Darude. Darude is the artist. <laughs> the song is called Sandstorm. Okay, so Rusted Darude did Sandstorm. Is that what you're saying? D- Rusted Darude did Sand Me on My Way. Is it the Where's that mashup? So Questlove. Okay. The Roots, right? Yes. yes. Got it. There's something there. There's something there. Yes, Listen, yes. I wanted to tell you guys about this wild thing that my kids' school did. And a lot of the schools in the tri-state region are uh, doing this. Um, okay. And it is something Math. that the local news station, WSAZ, we've talked about all its anchors, specifically uh, no fear, Tim Ear, the newsman who says he has no fears in right. an interview I read one time. No yes. fear, Tim Ear, uh, friend of the show. Um, yes. Rob- Reporter who got hit by a car. <laughs> in a that fun was our way. dad. That was our dad. Oh, there was also a woman who had happened. No, to the us. woman got hit by a car. Our dad got hit by a car. Not anyway. recently, folks. Don't worry. He's fine. So my kid, my kid gets in the car and she's like, "Hey, uh, Dad, this Friday we're doing it's uh, it's fired up Friday." I'm like, "It's fired up." Sorry, right. what? It's fired up Friday. I'm like, oh, cool. 
And she said, it's um, it's cool. You just, we have to be at school uh, at 5.30 a.m. And every... <laughs> no. And, I, and she's nine, right? But she's yeah. pretty with it. And I was like, uh, honey, I, I think you might have misunderstood whatever they were trying to tell you, sweetheart. That's not a time. That's not a time. No, no the world doesn't yeah, exist yeah. yet. That's not a time. They actually canceled that after I stopped delivering papers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They got rid of 5.30 a.m. That doesn't That's exist right. anymore. Start no, no, no. We need to be at the school at 5.30. And I was like, at there? Like, it exists, too, at this time, this 5.30. That Unless the rest it, of that sentence is because they have a bigger, more comfortable bed there that they yeah, then will transfer last, us to. Yeah. Um. The, the, so, yeah. And then that means that by my by the transitive property, that means that we have to, we would have to give it 430 in the morning. This is the plan. This is the school wide plan. Right. And the school is trying to get people on board with Fired Up Friday. They're giving out. Uh, community service hours, and you can uh, uh, you can you can earn homework credits, so you don't have to do homework. Wait, to what Fuck. end, Justin? Sorry, what's happening at five thirty? Is so it just get there to see if they show up in the morning at six in the news broadcast? That happens at six in the morning, which apparently they are also doing. Yeah, <laughs> without any consultation with me, the kids do like a skit, and then they scream. To show that they love sports. Oh, wow. And, and this the is... coach usually does a skit where one time I saw the coach pretended to be asleep and then everybody screamed so loud about basketball. He woke up and got fired up, I guess. That's good and shit. Now, in the, so awesome. there's like skit, there's sketches and skits and it's something for the news to cut to at six in the morning. And all the schools in the area are trying to get as many of these freaking kids as they can to just pack this place at 5.30 in the fucking morning. Justin, I'm trying to follow this narrative. It's but, tough, right? Yeah, There's yeah. A because here's what confuses me, Justin. Mm. If this happens at 6 o'clock, the amount of time you've described that this takes, in my mind, is like starts at 6, done by 6.30. School starts at like 7.30 or 8. What do they do with the kids yeah. for the next yeah. hour and a half? So here's the keep here, here's the plan. It's a party. They said, oh, "See, it's no. a party that goes till school no. starts." And right. and it's party also, don't stop till school starts. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the worst party. The worst party. Uh, they got them all fired up on Tudor's biscuits. No, <laughs> that doesn't fire you up. No, Tudor's <laughs> biscuits. No, fired up on it, Tudor's biscuit world, which is just like coming home, as the slogan says. It's so also like get, dumping a bucket of sand on a fire that is the energy for your day. Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing, man. So they get these kids. My kid, my youngest kid, and they're asking all these kids. My youngest kid's five years old, and, and already a, pretty cynical. I don't think Cooper gets fired up about things. She what, at four thirty in the morning. These freaking kids. So we get the kids to school at five thirty. They scream for the news about how they love basketball, and then they're like, "Okay, we got a little time to kill. Let's get these kids a real." fucking trucker breakfast <laughs> yes. let's just slather these fucking kids up and now it's time for a day of learning come on let's do it and but guess who the real victim in all of this is probably you i'm it's guessing me. it's yeah. me it's me because i i didn't get fired up about nothing no yeah. i gotta wake up with my kids and shovel three pocket coffees in my mouth and yeah. then drive them to school and you then didn't just get, wonder. you didn't get to scream for the news I didn't get to scream for the news. I didn't get any tutors. Bullshit. I, I also I didn't get this, a homework credit. <laughs> at this point, Justin, <laughs> Nothing. I, I know your children pretty well. I've spent a lot of time with them over the years. Yeah. I would be amazed if between the two of them combined, they give half a shit about basketball. No, no, no. but no, I will also fired s- up. I will say that I do know your daughters to get fired up sometimes and yell. They and do s- get fired up. They do get fired and up. I think. Um, I think it sucks that the only thing I got out of it was basically the closest you can get to a coked up five year old. Yeah, just yeah. like just absolutely just psyched out of her mind on uh, sports uh, and uh, sausage. I don't really screaming at the camera. Related question to this: mm-hmm. I know all groups aside, people are awake early for different jobs or whatnot. Who's ready 
for news at six o'clock in the morning. Somebody must yeah. be drunk. But, but who's like, with everything in the world today, we don't need to get into it. People have real jobs. But who's like, you know what's gonna start my day off right at 6 a.m. hearing about everything that's going on in the world right now? What would you program at 6 a.m.? What is your target demo at 6 a.m.? That's practice news. That's when they do the practice news. Yes, that's how, if it's your first day doing, okay, if you want to get started as a reporter, and we need more great reporters uh, that are willing to work for basically nothing. No money. Here's how you get started. Just show up at the news station at about 5 o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 5 o'clock, they'll let anybody do it that's, that's first at five do you know why they call it first at five because it's your first time doing and news. first come yeah. first serve you know first what I mean? come, like first serve whoever gets there first gets to pick if they want to be the anchor or the reporter yeah or the and camera they person do the news. Well, they, they don't have, have camera, camera. that's too. all ai that's all AI. oh wow that's really AI. yeah now hold on AI. if they have ai could they not just generate via ai a clip of many children screaming and not have to wake up the entire city. Is yeah, get like. Weta in here. Come on. Like yes. And yes, that is true. I and if no Weta one shows up to do the news, like they've got bad weather, they could just, they'll have, you know, fucking Bonzi buddy do it. <laughs> do I know that AI Bonzi buddy. It's all to, a strat. It's all a strat to go viral. You, you can't ignore this news TV that is on if you hear children screaming coming out of it. We are all sort of biologically attuned to hear that noise and go, what the fuck? Yeah, but with AI, and I'm not a supporter of AI in the in the creative fields, except not that the technology could... or the Haley Joel Osment movie. I didn't care for. I don't like that either has one grown of those. on me. That has really? grown on me. With yeah, it me out. It's, it's worth a rewatch, Travis. It's worth okay, a rewatch. okay. It's worth a rewatch. I wasn't wild about the ending, but I know. But it's um, there's important stuff that happens. Ironically, I think you could use the technology of the AI, AI to make some changes to AI that would make me like it more. Maybe I'm just saying with artificial intelligence engines and algorithms, we could create a news clip of like 250 thousand kids all screaming about local basketball. That's gonna move some TV subscriptions. You know what? You know what I would program at 6 a.m. Justin, you asked, and in, in the back of my head, this process has been running. Yep. I would program another adult mirroring. They're in a kitchen. They're getting ready for the day, too. And they just occasionally look at the camera and go, I know, man. I know, right? That's cool. That's yeah. not Travis. Hey, I'm proud of you TV. for being away. That's not entertainment. That's not. That's nothing. You've you've basically you don't think that would be a, beneficial. You've just described an an adult mobile is what you're saying. Just like no, something. On, Travis no, Travis is talking. This is a loneliness aid. Yeah. that they put on the news sometimes when you're having a hard one. Like and also Friday, the, a little bit of affirmation too of just saying like, hey, yeah, it sucks to be up this early, but we're gonna get shit done today. Hey, could they ask questions about great. my day? That doesn't happen in my life. Yeah, I absolutely, they could. That's six cool. a.m. You need a friend. I don't even need that. I just need to see another moving human body. Yeah. <laughs> just to be, just to, that's like my seasonal affective disorder lamp is just seeing a moving person and knowing that there's, it's not just me. You know? Adult, okay. So, adult what if, friend. Adult friend. And mm, I don't like putting the word adult in front of things because of the connotations of that. Grown friend. Grown friend. Because I, when I used to get up for school for high school. Yeah. Um, mm. And I, I would watch every morning VH1. Yeah. They oh, would have, they would that have gets pop your day going. It would well, get morning day grind. Going. They would have pop-up video on there. Yeah. yeah. I would like a pop-up video of another human being getting ready for the day, but he just tells me little secrets about them, little salacious secrets. I want to turn, I want to be able to turn that off. Maybe okay. we put that, <laughs> I don't know if yeah, there's a, I, I want a, I want an option where I never get Travis's channel, even okay. by accident. No, I want second. the lonely, no, no, I want the loneliness aid. I want the grown friend. <laughs> but I don't want the secrets. So this is a new role at a TV station now. Is it you have, have to be secret anchor, reporter, weather, sports, loneliness aid, grown friend who can be there for you. Then we'll slip them in there every every you know five or ten minutes. Uh, and then the screaming children. This is these are the six steps to running a successful TV news station. I meant more um, like insights. Wherever so often a bubble would pop up, and be like. Boop. This person dreamed of being a dancer, but gave that up. Was it? Yeah, Just see, I don't mean backstory. I don't want that. No, I, don't I don't want that. that. Okay. I, don't I don't need that. that. Against all odds, this is an advice show, and the way it works is you send us your questions at mbmbam at maximumfun.org, and we turn them out like into wisdom. Here's our first question for this week. So I've been stretching almost daily since last May, and now I'm more flexible than the average Joe Schmo. In fact, Ooh, my splits are getting impressive. 
Nice. I could brag to my friends, but that seems a bit gauche. How can I casually do the splits around people such that they acknowledge it, but don't stop everything to watch? That's from Crotch to the Grindstone in mm. New Pulse. I think stretching every day. You got to read the P.S. It's incredibly oh. important. Oh. P.S. I'm talking about a front split. It is imperfect, but maybe three inches off the ground at the highest point. I have five roommates and a cat who has seen the splits already. I'm a college student who spends much of his time in an organic chemistry lab. Mm. Would have started with that. Yeah. So sort of like play the old rope-a-dope a little bit of like, there's no fucking way this person does the splits. And then you hit me with that. By the way, I can do the splits pretty but good. But they're not trying to impress you. They're trying to impress their friends and loved ones. I okay. think someone who stretches every day is more impressive to me than someone who keeps up with flossing. Frankly, at this age, at my age, at 40, I wish yeah. I had started stretching every day back at like 22. It's oh, good. It's too late it, now. So much of me is no, calcified. Oh, no, Griffin, it's good. Griffin I, it's is, good. is very diligent about this. I'll say repeatedly, we've been mid-conversation, mid-gift giving, mid-funeral. Yeah. And Griffin will be like, I got to roll it out. I got to get my yeah. weird my weird little bean and roll, roll my roller, body on it. Not a bean. It's a foam roller. It's a foam roller. Foam rollers into rude. Are there any other things you guys want to show your asses on completely in this episode? <laughs> How do what is the foam work, roller Griffin? for? What is the foam roller for? What does it do? This it, is the only place I can talk to you about this stuff because you get so defensive when we're not recording. This is the only place you're vulnerable. Right. I've seen Justin ask what's the foam roller do and Griffin just immediately hangs up. Yeah, Are I you, throw it at him. I have I say, asked though before, out. haven't I, Travis? Yeah. I have asked. I never get an answer. I'm Griffin is a, is a very guarded, shadowy very creature. Guarded. Griffin doesn't we reveal it. We barely know Griffin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the way I upkeep my body, it doesn't have to be a part of our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking See? about, Griffin. Is, I like, ask, how are your kids? And you're like, they're here. No, no, no. I'll talk about my kids all day long. But you want to talk about how my, my upkeep, my maintenance... Um, the foam roller, it just feels good to to lean backwards on. You know how sometimes you lean back on a chair to get a good stretch? Imagine yeah. that, but the chair moves with you in a Do you lie on the floor? Space. No, I mean, you lie on the foam roller, which is on the floor. That's so vulnerable. Okay. You got to close so and lock the door. No. If, I, if I come upon you in that position and I have ill intent, you're dead. You're dead. Yeah, no, you're not for sure. Back I that. would say that's actually so vulnerable if I came upon you in that position. If I did not have ill intent before, yeah, I would yeah, then develop it. ill intent of like, well, I gotta, yeah. I gotta hurt him now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a crab on his back when I'm doing it. But I, then I stand up, I'm an inch and a half taller, and I feel great about my day. Okay. I want to th- say that I think you shouldn't force this. I think that you will know when it is time to do a split. Yeah. And the t- and it has to be organic because otherwise you are showing off. But if you wait for the moment, the perfect moment, mm-hmm. I could think of three times just in the past year where if I could have busted out like a devastating split, yeah. Yeah. it would have absolutely seized the day, ended the conversation. I mean, yeah. it would have been monumental. You yeah. work in a chemistry lab. There will come I a don't. day. I am a podcaster. There will come a day, question asker, where someone will, whoa, right? A, a beaker yeah. of something goes a flying. A beaker of science yeah. gel. Yeah. You go Juice. into a full-blown Rockford Peaches, fucking leave, League of Their Own split, you catch it. Boom. Great. Everybody applauds. They take a picture. They put it on the front page of the paper. Yeah. And, yeah. and then when people are like, whoa, that's amazing, you say, I didn't even know I could do that. No. Yeah. No, I drank a I special like potion. I I made I drank a special science juice that I mixed up in the lab, yeah. and it made me super bendy and rubbery. I'm elastic. How much man better now, would the it most be? Most powerful of the Justice League. Yeah. How much more inspirational would it be if the person looks in the microphone and says, "I thank you. I practice them every day, but it's just for me." Oh, that's cool. I can't. I didn't want you to see this. What I do, oh, I can't. I'm you so, were never the way supposed I keep to my see body this side of secret. me. Oh. Yeah. I yeah. I, no, please, no applause. This is just. Isn't for me. it nicer, question asker, dear? Isn't it nicer? To have a little secret. Isn't it nicer yeah. to hear a conversation in, in the room where people are like, nobody's ever done the splits, and you're like, <laughs> well, a little chuckle to yourself, you know, because well, you know you do the splits. Let's ask you know. Griffin. Griffin, is it nice to have secrets? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. I it's mean, great. I'm an open book. 
That's too, true. Uh, That's too, true. Uh, sometimes too you're open. trying yeah. to shut it. My <laughs> spine is broken. My book can't close. Right. It hurts I, so bad. <laughs> I posit that most people can do splits. It's just a question of how long it takes you to assume the position and if you can get up from it and go about your day. And recovery time, I would say, would be the third the recovery aspect time is of also that. Up for it. I think well, I could do a split. I think it would take me about 20 minutes to well, get guy, down. Guys, I, I think there's only one way for me to, to find this out. I got to do a little bit of so – I, I got a moving arm here. I'm gonna Should we all the, do the splits real no. quick and see how – Oh, no. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've already had a vasectomy, but I think I'll leave it there as far as trauma to my testicles. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, Travis, you get to be the judge of the splits. Perfect. Coach. You're going to have to angle your cameras down or I'll just see your horrified faces. No, you okay. don't get to see that part. Yeah, That's we're not going to shit. Oh, it's got to be honor system. It's got to be honor system. Front, front splits or side splits? Well, well front splits is what they're talking about. I think side splits is harder. How far front down splits can you get? is like the, the foot goes in front of you and behind you, right? The other one's the Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. You're doing front and back. Okay, I'm. S- oh, I don't want to see any bending down. knees. We're not proposing here. Oh. No, I know. <laughs> this no, is okay. what I'm saying. It okay. sucks so bad. But <laughs> oh my god! How far off the minutes. ground would you say you are? I can't see your leg. If you had to measure <laughs> in like inches, this. I'm like, I'm like, ah! Oh god! I think I heard something tear from Justin. I think I was probably about ten inches off the ground. I, that okay. was my that was foot. my estimate. I think I'm I got to about foot. ten inches. A foot a on the ground. Foot. I'm a good foot, but give me twenty minutes, <laughs> and I'm down there, baby. You're just letting gravity do its job. <clears throat> okay, that, still waiting for gravity to give. Still the, waiting for gravity to give back up. There was there was. Here's what I will say. I could have gone deeper, but there was definitely a moment. It was like a <laughs> very clear like point of no return. Like mm-hmm. you can split further than this, but you may never unsplit. <laughs> so there might My- be a moment, you know, when like oh uh, they talk about you know that that strength of like oh a baby trapped under a car and you get to punch. so there might be an emergency situation, Justin, where you're filled with adrenaline and you're able to do a split, right? But then that's maybe your next six weeks. Yeah, like, exactly. Like you could do. It's like a great trick. I can only do it once. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Mike just Grendel. wait for the moment. Just wait for that. Perfect. Mike Grendel. <laughs> Mike Man, I want to do jokes. Justin, let Griffin update Mike his Grendel. Grendel. My Grendel is in a crisis. Like emotionally, Grendel, physically. Grendel is in a crisis. I don't want to tell you that. Um, <laughs> Diana See? sent in. This is what I'm talking out. about, Griffin. Open the up. Wizard, we're going to the wizard's house. And Diana is leading us there. Diana got us the invite. Thank you, Diana. This is Wiki How How to Sew Up Your Taint. <laughs> this is <laughs> How to Sew Your um, Taint Back Together. This is How to Find Treasure. I Treasures liter- everywhere. I literally feel like my body is a ship and they called an emergency in my crotch and everyone yeah. had to go. Like yeah. my brain is on a skeleton crew right now with the amount of discomfort <laughs> oh, I'm experiencing down there. Treasure is everywhere. You can find treasure in exotic locations at the flea market in your town or even in your backyard. You never know when you might find a hidden gem, buried fortune, or ancient relic. Um, I'm going to say that treasure is not at a flea market. You can find some pretty good pickups there, mm-hmm. but you can't find treasure at a store. Do you know what I mean? I, I've, okay, watched that's a lot of, I've watched a lot of Antiques Roadshow, Griffin. I think you can find treasure at a flea market. In terms of like, you can buy treasure at a flea market. Oh yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. He's yes, saying good that point. If you can you buy cannot... it in a store; it's not treasure. Yes, okay. Yes, you've bought I could treasure. Cash, I could cash out all of my savings and go buy a diamond or something. Trav, and what is it that Richard E. Not... Grant called it? Oh, <gasps> uh, what Snuff, was it? Snuffling out some gubbins. <laughs> snuffling for gubbins. Yes, yeah, snuffling, snuffling for gubbins. gubbins. Snuffling for gubbins. What is snuffling for gubbins? <laughs> is it, Richard E. Grant Gr- is a great actor and an amazing Instagram realist who okay. makes these incredible Instagram reels where it's just a close up of his huge smile. And he's like, ah. And it's like real close up. And there was one of him like walking through an outdoor like flea market thing. He's like, ah, just out here on a lovely Sunday, snuffling for gubbins. <laughs> I do like that a lot. Um, it's wonderful. Okay. Get a metal detector to help you find metal objects. When you get to your destination, turn on your metal detector and adjust your settings, blah, blah, blah. Um, When your metal detector finds something, it'll light up or make a sound. Use a shovel or garden spade to dig where your detector finds treasure. 
put that earlier. I'm already at the beach with my metal detector and no shovel, like a ding dong. Gotta steal one from a child. Gotta take his child's shovel. You never hear from Elon or Bezos or other rich guys. Yeah. And they're like, how'd you get your start? They're never like, well, I got this metal detector. Uh huh. <laughs> Went to the beach, dug up. Captain Jack Sparrow's sacred chest. Mm -hmm. It had a hundred thousand million dollars in it. So you sort of you are not familiar with the work of professional treasure hunter Gary Drayton, right? Because Gary Drayton, the hero of Curse of Oak Island, regularly yeah. I have seen the man discover doubloons. Yep, okay. I've seen him discover. Th um, he discovered the balloons. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, balloons. Look at these the balloons. <laughs> The balloons of Darude. He found a then, lot of his. He calls this Bobby week Dazzlers. on Legends of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> the balloons of Darude. Of Darude. Of Darude. <laughs> <laughs> he found an old chunk of metal that may be a spike from an old old ship. There's all kinds of stuff you could okay. dig up. But he is not a famously wealthy man, Justin, as evidenced by the fact that I have already forgotten his name. <laughs> that you said fucking a minute ago. So. Here's here's a little uh, metal detector life hack. If you discover yeah. with the metal detectors, you're so you can just walk around the beach and walk up to people's like bags and pockets and stuff and swipe it at their bag and be like, beep, 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 I found treasure. And someone's like, yeah. that's my wallet. And you're like, yeah. And you lost it and I found it. And they're like, I didn't lose it. It was in my backpack. And you're like, ah, yeah. but my metal detected it. I have never, I don't know that I've ever seen a TikTok of a person doing metal detecting or magnet fishing. And they're like, oh, fuck yeah, a safe full of American money. Uh, it's always like, oh, fuck, a bomb, or, ah, oh, man, a corpse somehow, shit, and then you have to wait for the cops to show up, yeah. and that's your whole day, and also you have to interact with cops. How come so that's cops are always so mad about magnet fishing? You would think they are all, they're always they, so mad. Yeah. What are you doing with this bomb? Why do you have this? I probably shouldn't. Uh, are, is it okay to say that word on podcast? Which one? Are you afraid TSA is going to shut us down? <laughs> I don't know, or FCC. You can't take this podcast into an airport. I guess that's true. I mean, I do call stuff da bomb a lot. Yeah, like that's true. true. Like Darude's. Like Darude. <laughs> like Darude. Uh, okay, investigate the strip of land between roads and sidewalks. Um, that's, I guess, where people drop their stuff the the the, the most. Um, like you get off a road. Okay. <laughs> They're saying there's a road, right? And uh -huh. then yeah. you see a side, you get out of your car. And then there's yeah. a sidewalk nearby, and you walk to that sidewalk, and along the way, you're just like <laughs> golden coins just shuffling out of your pockets. I can say from personal experience, there was a time where I was picking my uh, kid up from school, and it was a very hectic, uh, very stressful uh, school pickup, and I left my keys sitting on top of the car and drove away from the school and made it onto the highway on ramp, at which point my keys flew off of the top of my car. Now, luckily, it was a remote start. So my car stayed on with my kids inside. I pulled over the shoulder, left my left the car on, hopped out, started looking around for my keys, and people honked at me so angrily. And I just well, kept yelling wow. back, "Yes, I also don't want to be out here. Yes, yeah. I also. Do you see how I'm bent at the waist, looking at the ground? I also don't want to be here." Hey, but just because you're him. sorry, to, just because you're sorry, doesn't mean you're not gonna get in trouble. That's okay, true. I. You know, I've told that to my kids. I'm telling it to you. People are still going to get mad at you. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Never found those keys, by the way. That's, that's, Got home, that's and I was like, I remember. lost my keys. And my wife was like, how'd you get home? And I was like, well, I started the car when the keys were on top. <laughs> so did you get home, keys somewhere on the highway, and then say, well, car, we've had a good <laughs> run, but when I turn you off now, that's the end for us. You're like, dead forever. We're out of extra lives, bud. <laughs> this I is can it. never turn the car off. Um, just real quick, if the road is old, you may find items from previous centuries, like an artillery uniform button from the War of 1812. Uh, that's pretty specific. Very specific, yeah. Um, search along old public parks or picnic playgrounds. Find some old, find an old empty goldfish wrapper? I don't think this so. This says you have to sound like treasure. Okay, let's get into the good stuff. Look around vacant lots where buildings used to be. Eh, don't, maybe. Whoa. Uh, no, that's well, so Well, visit your dangerous. local library. Visit your local, this is this is good. Visit your local library and ask the librarian for an old map of your area. Okay, this good. is a great starting point for any treasure hunt. Your you should probably librarian. not say treasure map though, right? Like I yeah. would say, do you have any treasure maps of Huntington? <laughs> probably not. Yeah, I'm I mean, looking who, for a guide to 
Undiscovered riches. No, shit. Um, what profession would you approach before a librarian asking for clues for local treasures? Old prospectors. Uh, 100% a- antique pawn shops. Those are the two they're I would not gonna go fucking to. Tell, they're not going to fucking tell. Yeah, sure. Go take our treasures before we get to them. No way. The pawn no. shops don't look for the treasures. You take the treasures to the pawn shop and exchange them for arrowheads or scraps of leather or whatever you need to. You need a retired treasure hunter that you're okay. going to go to and they're going to be like, well, I'll tell you the one I never found. Sort of a sully situation. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're right. going to be like, I'll tell you, I searched all over. Here's the book. Here's uh, the volume of secrets. I ain't coming, yeah. but I never got there. And now uh, I'm just, I'm, t- I'm too bored. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm 43 and my mom says I need to get a job. So <laughs> now you take over. These are all too hard. Let's skip ahead. Okay. Okay. Method two, searching around your house. Look in the basement, attic, and garage of your home. If you recently moved into an old home or inherited a space from a relative, check in storage locations to see what you may find. Downstairs in our basement area, there is a little cabinet. We open it up, and there's some child's rain boots in there, which are fit our son great in the snow. So I, you're, that's, ooh, that's haunted. Child's rain boots in the ba- child's basement rain boots? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shit. Yeah. yeah, man. Sorry, bud. Pretty that's obvious. Pretty ha- that's one of the more haunted things you could find, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You said it yeah, out loud. Yeah, you yeah. heard it, right? Yeah. Only thing worse is one. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only child's rain one, boots. Never one worn. single <laughs> child's rain boot. That's so bad. That's Can I wicked say, bad. Children's feet grow so quickly. That I definitely have bought children's rain boots that were never worn. That is, yeah, because yeah, yeah. the feet outgrew them before they were necessary. So that particular short poem doesn't have the sort of um, emotional payload. Children's rain boots shoes. never worn. Twenty five dollars OBO. <laughs> OBO <laughs> hit me up. No delivery. No delivery. Pick up only. Uh, Kids' feet got too big. Sorry. Waste of money. Yeah, they never say baby <laughs> shoes, never worn, kid have fat feet. <laughs> Did not fit. That's Big feet. The, third line of the, story. the idea, okay, here, I just want a t-shirt, and it looks like a Craigslist listing. The, the headline is, kid shoes never worn, then underneath it said, do not waste my time with any fake offers. <laughs> <laughs> Will not drive to meet you at a second location. Shoes are offered as is. <laughs> Do email not from- insult me. I have been burned before. <laughs> email me for more pics. Text me at this number at night, but not this number while I'm at work. <laughs> Got to get these baby shoes out of here. <laughs> Need room for more baby shoes. Um, check around your home for any hidden doors or compartments. Yeah. When we when we moved to DC, that was step step one, and we found one. And it's the president's secret clubhouse. Uh, under our house is a trap door that goes down to the president's secret clubhouse. No kidding? Yeah. Is it cool? So, well, is cool. Joe Biden cool? No. <laughs> no. Not really. Not, not particularly. Really. Um, but he lets me use this clubhouse, and I do appreciate that. Normal one, inspect garbage and recycling bins to search for discarded treasure. No. But, yeah. As they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. But this is suggesting that one man's discarded treasure is another man's is identity still, theft. Is, is still treasure. Yeah, don't do identity theft. No. Um, now, Griffin, I don't think it's a twist. I think it's just a literal depiction of the old adage that one person's trash is another person's treasure. They're saying literally, literally the trash yeah. and see if it's actually treasure to you. But that suggests that the person had no need for... I, I get I, Who's out here throwing away treasure, guys? It's 2023, 2024. Are any of these steps, Griffin, befriend an eccentric billionaire on the edge of death? Because that, I think, is... Because then you're going to get embroiled... In a dangerous yeah. game of clues mm-hmm. and hints, uh, a la the Hawthorns or the Westing yes. game. So- I do think this is what Saltburn is about, but I'm not going to watch it because I've heard that is scary. It has scary parts yeah. in it. Um, be sure to use a disinfectant There's adult cleaner content. To- oh, no, there's so, never there's mind. There's a few adult content moments. I'm just going to watch Incredibles 2 again. That's probably a good bet. It's the only movie um, I watch, man. It's safe. I haven't seen the first one yet, so there's a lot of backstory I haven't caught up on. No spoilies. There's a little too much kissing in the first book yeah. First book of Incredibles for my taste. <laughs> I only read the novelization of The Incredibles. That, Real quick, I, though. Incredibles 2 isn't a kid's movie the way I watch it, if you know what I mean. How do you watch I it? I Incredibles. Shout out. 
from me from Mrs. Man. Incredible. Shout you're out just to saying Incredible. That you're just stopping the show to tell everyone. Time to drop the zero and get with the hero. There's a no. Okay. He's the hero, Justin. No, he's the zero compared to me. He's the superhero. Yeah, and that means he's had had everything handed to him. You're both married. With I children. work for you. It. Have children and a wife. It. I work for it, Mister Incredible. It's at everything handed to him. I True. work for it. Every Justin day. doesn't have powers. Justin's I don't weak. Have he powers. can't do. Justin's weak. He can't do a split. It's I'm harder a, for him. I'm a super taster. So what? I it's, bet Mrs. Incredible is not impressed by splits whatsoever. Yeah. But Mr. Incredible is a superhero. If the ragweed is bad, apples hurt my mouth. <laughs> like, yeah, you, but I've had to work for it, is all I'm yeah. saying. Your whole life. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Travis, is there a cartoon character that you would like to proposition in the middle of our show for some reason? Um, <laughs> Let me think. Hmm. There's I some, actually don't want to answer for that There's some water people question. in Elemental. That <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Um, hey, real quick, while you're looking at the garbage can, you could discover an old violin that is worth up to $50,000. That is a wild sentence. Words were not meant to be used that way. <laughs> yeah, no, it, yeah, it's great. Yeah, but I, you could, but, but don't rush to grab it because <laughs> underneath it, there may, may be a violin worth $100,000. Yeah, no way. And a man can only carry so many violins. But inside that violin is a small diamond worth $200,000. It may happen. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. Investigate barns and sheds to see what might have been left behind. Um, you could find a storage building full of random antiques, tools, or appliances, for instance. In addition, keep an eye out for scrap metal to sell or items to repurpose. Maybe this is what happened when Dad got all of his comic books stolen out of his storage unit. Is someone found the storage unit and was like, all right. Tre a, treasure. A <laughs> treasure in this abandoned storage unit. God, this door is hard to open. Man, this <laughs> must, door is really... It must be rusted shut. Yeah, it's really <laughs> stuck. To be fair, um, if I dug up a treasure chest that had a lock on it, I'd be like, well, cutting that right off there. Yeah. Oh, um, wow, Travis, that's a great... Okay, listen, that's a great point, right? If you see a chest out in the open, and you're like, I'm going to smash that lock off and take what's in it, you're a, crim like, you're a criminal. Yes, correct. But, yeah. but if you dig it out of the ground... Even a little bit. Even a bit, right? And then you do it, you're a hero? Yep. Yeah. This is a good, this is actually, this is a good money laundering scheme Tell me. for like pickpockets. You steal all the stuff that you want and then, you know, the uh, inspector Lupin is after you or whatever. Oh, he's going to bust your ass. And he's become a cop now? Yeah, he's Lupin's a cop. Lupin's with less <laughs> authorities. Yeah. yeah. And you. Sorry, take the it gentleman to the thief? Mon dieu! Griffin Lupin? Arsene Lupin? Arsene Lupin. Arsene Lupin? The it's, gentleman thief? It's his brother, Jeremy Lupin, and he's picking- he's, Those two are always at odds. He's chasing you. This is a good idea for thieves, and I've given so much to this community. <laughs> oh my God, I'm <laughs> sure. He's been friend. a crime supporter for years, vocally. I'm, I'm doing my best out here for all of these- Urban foragers, I'm telling you, <laughs> you steal. <laughs> what a great euphemism for thieves. When you've stolen a bunch of stuff, take it to the park, dig a hole, bury it, wait a minute, dig it out of the hole. Someone's like, where the fuck did you find all that? You say, uh, excuse me, I think this is buried treasure, and uh, finds these keepsies. Thank you so much. You know where there's a lot of buried treasure? Where's that? Graveyards. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah, it's all buried it's treasure, a, locked in boxes. You can find rings, necklaces. Sure, trap. Yeah. yeah. Gold yeah, teeth. Yeah. yeah. yeah sure. Yeah, yeah all man. Stuff. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Completely Baby legal. Jones. Search online to find information about famous buried treasure. Um, for example, read up on Davy Jones's locker if you want to find Grand Fortune. A Spanish ship sank in 1511, and on board was nearly 600 tons of gold and 200 chests of diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. The ship has never been found, and it presumably is somewhere in the Strait of Malacca between Sumatra and Malaysia. Okay, so we've escalated just uh, from get a metal detector and shovel to, yeah. hey, maybe try deep sea recovery with, yeah. like, I guess uh, some kind of freighter. And like yeah. d deep sea divers, if I can do that, I have treasure already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, learn how to decipher clues and riddles. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Now, now that's a good. Now. That should be honestly 
right after keep your grades up on all yeah. of these. If yeah, you can yeah. decipher clues and riddles, you're five steps ahead. They this need is to add that to the end of every standardized test in school. Start weeding out potential like uh, master uh, detectives, right? And be like, yeah, listen, he only got like eighty percent on the standardized test ring portion, but he's scoring Poirot plus in the on thing. riddles. We got we got to rush this guy straight to the straight of whatever Griffin said where the treasure is. In high school, yep. I had, I had been told that if you do good enough on the SAT, that you could be recruited by the CIA. <laughs> is that what people who do well on the SAT want? Like, if you know. score a perfect score in the SAT, and they're like, you could come work for the CIA. I think my response would be like, that's no, the dream. No, thank you. No. <laughs> I'm just saying that is what I had been informed, is that part of the SAT is if you do really, really good at it, then yeah. you, you get into the CIA. They sneak a question at the end that's like, do you like destabilization? What's your <laughs> it's feel? What do you, how do you feel about... Um, Where do you want your intelligence? Do you want you it on the disguises? outside edge of things? Or perhaps... <laughs> In the center. <laughs> um, to find the treasure, some form of code must be broken. Yeah. For instance, research Thomas J. Beale's gold and silver deposit, which is said to be buried somewhere in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Fuck, we were just there. Wait a minute. You Damn. could also read The Secret, A Treasure Hunt by Byron Priest, uh, okay. which is a book full of poems and illustrations leading you to gems buried throughout the world. And I think only five of them have been solved. Oh, fuck yeah. Something like that. It came out before the other The Secret. So yeah, you can it was read, like, I was going to say, you can also read The Secret. The Secret. So it's the like you wrote The attraction. Secret, A Treasure Hunt, and the author of The Secret was like, too much work. Yeah. <laughs> no, just tell yourself you love, have gems. Just yeah. act like somebody with gems. Um, I put a bunch of pictures of gems on a board, and then I got gems. Consider going diving to find items deep nope. in the sea. Consider Scary. going diving. Yeah. Scary, yes, scary and expensive, I think, to get accredited. So I would need to find, well, I think deep sea treasure diving has lost a little bit, a little bit of the shine came off that old apple, Why? I would say. Why? You lost because it. Of what, because of what happened last year. There are a lot of things happened yeah, last year. Yeah, you're going to have to narrow it down. Yeah, you're going to narrow it down. Because, like, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't, I do not know what you're referencing. The Can you S drill down on it a little bit? The, the SUV. The SUV? <laughs> the SUV? The SUB subway that went the soup that went Subaru. It got real small real quick, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so we don't. Oh, oh, Griffin, right, 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 that right, was right. in poor taste. Oh, Griffin, Griffin. How could you? Oh, Griffin. I'm, okay. You guys asked. Wow. And did, I was trying to find a way. Something of about it, laying it out in public though, like that. The way you laid it out made it seem so crass. How you spelled okay. it out just then yeah. made it seem so crass. Do you Shanks, know? Maybe some you know of our younger listeners treasure? don't know about the SUB, and so when I spell it, they don't know what it is that we're talking about. Do you know where we could find treasure? Where's that trap? The money zone. Probably not anymore. I'll tell you, Griff, I'll tell you my biggest problem with, with trying to, like, eat a more nutritious uh, 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 food consumption plan. Yeah, and we should point out Travis got flushed away. Oh, sorry, Travis. Travis, Travis, using the potty, Travis was using the, the potty, potty earlier. He, he fell in and then flushed it. He got flushed away like the movie. I let myself get so hungry, and then when I'm so hungry, everything that is good for me and would honestly taste good is yeah. too hard, takes too long. So I have a Dorito, I have five Doritos, or 50 yes. Doritos, however many uh -huh. Doritos it is. Factor is going to step in to change all that, though, because we're going to skip the prep, skip the grocery store, skip the cooking, all of it, and just skip right to delicious nutrition. All right? Okay. Factor has everything you need for a week of flavorful, nutritious eats. They got ready-to-eat meals, but it's not just the meals, Griffin. Cold-pressed juices, smoothies. They have smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> energy bites, extra protein, veggie size, whatever you need to keep your body fueled and ready to perform. That's good for me. I yeah. do a lot of uh, high octane stuff. And the idea of having a sort of bandolier of energy bites yeah. on my person at all times <laughs> that I can sort of typewriter up into my mouth. Maybe my a mouth. sort of gigantic Pez dispenser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just pop one open yeah. and blast yourself with the proteins you crave. That sounds really nice to me, actually. Uh, and this is, how long to make one of these meals? Well, Griffin, how about two minutes? How's two minute grab you? Hmm? That's Restaurant about, quality in two minutes? That's Deliver almost, right to your door? Come on. That's almost the lowest number of minutes you can 
have. Right now, you're going to head on over to factormeals.com slash brother50 and use code brother50 to get 50 percent off we've never had a 50 in a code before that's y'all. huge this that's is huge. huge this is huge normally it's just words but this time there's a 50 to help you remember you're gonna get 50 percent off that's code brother 50 at factor meals.com slash brother 50 to get 50 percent off the code is uh, the brother 50 is a five and a zero don't try and spell I'm out trying to spell it the out. words because then you get uh, – then the government finds out. Yes. Factormeals.com, and that code is BROTHER50. From the twisted minds that brought you the Adventure Zone, Balance and Amnesty and Graduation and Ether Sea and Steeplechase and Ultra Space and all the other ones, the McElroy brothers and dad are proud to reveal a bold vision for the future of actual play podcasting. It's um, it's called the Adventure Zone versus Dracula. Yeah, we're gonna kill Dracula's ass. Ah! We're gonna, well, we're gonna attempt. We haven't recorded all of it yet. We will attempt to kill Dracula's ah! ass. The Adventure Zone versus Dracula. Yes, a season I will be running uh, using the D and D Fifth Edition uh, rule set. And there's two episodes out for you to listen to right now. We hope you will join us. Same bat time, same bat channel. For and bats. I see what you did there. People say not to judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. Which is why here on Just the Zoo of Us, we judge them by so much more. We rate animals out of 10 in the categories of effectiveness, ingenuity, and aesthetics, taking into consideration each animal's true strengths, like a pigeon's ability to tell a Monet from a Picasso or a polar bear's ability to play basketball. Guest experts like biologists, ecologists, and more join us to share their unique insight into the animal's world. Listen with friends and family of all ages on MaximumFun.org or wherever you get podcasts. Here it goes. I want to munch. Squad. I want to munch. Squad. Welcome to Munch Squad's podcast with the podcast profile and latest and greatest brand eating. Uh, guys, it is 20 Fun Galore. Uh, we're, we're getting deep in it. And I know what everybody is wondering. How are the brands celebrating this new year? Today, I have for you the top five wildest ways that our food brands have decided that they will mark the beginning of new year. Me, uh, I like to just take it, take a minute to refresh and restart. I don't, I'm not big on resolutions, but it doesn't matter what us, the people are doing. I care about the brands. Yeah. Shake brands are people. Shake Shack is starting 2024 with a sweet and spicy menu. Okay. Shake Shack is bringing its flavor a game to 2024 with new menu items featuring Swicy, mm, which is sweet slash spicy, cool. and umami flavors and tastes. It's better couldn't than get speed. Umami, couldn't get umami in there, huh? So couldn't, get, couldn't squish those three words together. Swiss nope. army. <laughs> Swiss army. So that's oh thank you, Shake Shack. What a burger is launching. What a wings to kick off twenty twenty four. What a burger is kicking off the new year in a big way with all new boneless what a wings made with juice n- with nine juicy one hundred percent white meat chicken bites tossed in one of our four famously bold sauces. I would say at this point, Anno Domine twenty Fungalore, adding boneless wings to a menu isn't anything. It's maybe one of the uh, easiest things. That's the thing that Teresa and I are like, I don't feel like making dinner for the kids. Yeah. We'll just throw n- some nugs, nugs in the nugs. air fryer. You want to you impress me, uh, Whataburger? Bone wings. Yeah. I don't, yeah. There's restaurant. If McDonald's Wingless started to sell, bones. <laughs> can you guys imagine if McDonald's started selling food with bones in it? <laughs> can you fucking imagine if... Rallies, Rallies Checkers does it, and it always feels a little bit sketch. Like, it's rough. If you're going to get a beak, that's where it's going to happen. It's uh, bones. Bojangles unveils a chicken rice bowl for the new year. 
Bojangles is kicking off the new year with its latest culinary masterpiece, the chicken what? rice bowl. So they the the rolls over the, the old calendar flips. Bojangles has a rice bowl. So you're saying, wait, Justin, they've yep. combined chicken and rice in a bowl masterpiece. One, yeah, you, <laughs> it, you it, rivals, only be able to, it rivals the greatest works of Van Gogh. They used to only have chicken and rice in like a sandwich baggie, and uh-huh. you had to eat yeah. it. <laughs> Eat it with like your. You had pan. to cut the bottom of the yeah. bag open and then just <laughs> like an astronaut. Now, like an astronaut. Now they hand now, you a bowl and a, a a segment of the Mona Lisa to wipe your mouth with. So so great is this rice bowl. It trumps any work. Who's this character? Yeah, oh, it is a, an art critic, but he's really excited about the Bojangles uh, gender okay. rice bowl. And he also, hey, he doesn't have a lot else going on for <laughs> it him. Seem like no, it. His partner just left him, and his Shit. dog just left him for a better owner. And Whoa, uh, I didn't even know they could do that. Yeah, no, the dog was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take off. I'm okay. uh, moving up. And Griffin, they closed the Bojangles closest to his house. Now he has to drive oh, 15 man. miles. The Bojangles left him. Yeah, I'm, Bojangles uh, left I'm him. Sorry, not Arctic giving man. up. And it's so not if, me. It's you. If Talk you would it. not, if you would not it's criticize right, sorry. him, he can criticize artworks and Bojangles. But we can't criticize him. But you okay. can't. Cri- he's in. He's just in a very tell delicate me. place right now. Okay, tell me about Taco Bell. Um, hey, yo, uh, Taco John's. Taco Bell isn't. Is <laughs> my no. apologies. Taco, Taco, Taco Bell is my father. Not noticing. They are not recognizing. They're going to kick it in 2023. Taco John's knows that the best way to celebrate the new year and watch all the big games is naturally with tacos. And a value-driven bundle of tacos can help people save money without sacrificing great flavor. A value-driven bundle value driven. of tacos. Flavor driven. Who's hungry? <laughs> <laughs> Yum. That, there's something about that that gives me like 1984 double speak. <laughs> like, yeah. No, what I'm saying is these are cheap old tacos. Okay, guys. Now available at all Taco John's locations, fans can save two dollars off the six pack and a pound bundle. <laughs> what? <laughs> Which includes six soft shell or crispy tacos loaded with seasoned American beef, mild sauce. All natural cheddar cheese and shredded lettuce, plus a pound of Taco John's signature crispy potato olays. I have to go. What's that? Yeah, they're probably hash browns. With all the big games coming up this time of year, there's no better way to feed your team, says Taco John's Chief Marketing Officer Barry Westrom. Saving money on our flavor-packed tacos and signature potato olays means you can add sides of nacho cheese. Super nachos, yeah. a meat and potato burrito combo meal, or a churro. Meat potato burrito. Meat potato, meat burrito, potato combo burrito combo meal. churro. Drink some meat put it in a potato burrito. Whoever you're rooting for, Taco John's has you covered. Um, All right. Whoever you're rooting for, enjoy that hour-long bathroom break after yeah. the game. I'm yeah. actually I'm rooting for myself. And yeah. that is incompatible with this flavor-driven Taco John's experience. Uh, and lastly, uh, the wildest way to ring in the new year comes to us from Fazoli's. Fazoli's welcomes new year with new stuffed shells entrees. Huh. Fazoli's, is, Fazoli's is bringing fans cheesy comfort as the new year mm. kicks off with three new stuffed shells entrees. Hmm. Sometimes I forget that Fazoli's is a chain and not just the one place in our hometown. In I believed Huntington. it was a chain at one point, and then I started to suspect that there was just one Fazoli's in Huntington and the rest when were I, gone. Well, there's when a, I found out, there's when the, I found out Fazoli's was a chain, I was shocked. I can't believe that the things they do in that building, they do in many other buildings across okay, the Okay, you guys know that that's not true because there's the Fazoli's on 5th, but there's also the Fazoli's next to the HIMG that used to be a Walmart that used to be a drive-in. Yeah, that wasn't there. I think when I lived there. Yeah, it was because Tommy worked at that one, so he oh, definitely okay. was there. Tommy okay. Smurl got his start. Tommy Red, the four cheese stuffed shells. Can I'm not going to tell you about all that's these. too many cheeses. There's like a lot of cheeses, and they're going to put them in a lot of shells. And there's what says, shells? What kind of shells? Like crab shells, like crab shells. shells. Actually, Trav, if you're in the mood for seafood, good to hear it. It says here for a seafood kick. Guests can order the garlic shrimp stuffed shells, which includes 12 shrimp simmered in a roasted garlic marinara sauce. Yeah, take me on a trip. Now, diving further into its Italian roots. Fazoli's has Italian roots? 
It's a really, really, really wild way to start a sentence about Fazoli's. And it just, it just keeps getting wilder. Diving further into its Italian roots, Fazoli's has whipped up another mouthwatering dessert with its longtime partner, the Cheesecake Factory <laughs> Bakery. I didn't know it's they a, were dating. It's Italian cream cake. They're getting into their Italian roots by buying an Italian cream cake from Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> yeah. That's how I get, I feel like there's a lot of people that are just kind of, you know, on the fence there trying to get their Italian roots by buying an Italian cream cake. From I wouldn't the be cheesecake surprised factory. to find out that how this works is they drive at like five o'clock, everything opens. Well, somebody from Fazoli's drives over to a uh, cheesecake factory, buys a cheesecake at like market value, brings it back, and then sells it, sells it for like 25 cents more a slice. And they're yeah. just like marking it up. There's no partnership well, here. Yeah. There's no partnership. What they're saying is Cheesecake Factory agreed to not rip us off so we could rip you off instead. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy the cake. At Fazoli's. What would, what would Cheesecake Factory be getting from Fazoli's besides money? And like Fazoli's goes in like, and you let us sell your cheesecake and we'll let you sell whatever you want. We're good. It's probably just money though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You don't. You know that most of the time when something like this happens, it's not like the but NFL I, draft where they're like, "Oh, from Cheesecake Factory, we get cream sweets, and Cheesecake Factory gets baked ziti." Yeah, but if I went to McDonald's and bought a hamburger, I wouldn't say I'm in a partnership with McDonald's. Okay, I want to say. I want to say something. If you then that. sold that hamburger to someone else, I would say you are absolutely in a business partnership with McDonald's. No, I want to talk about this partnership for a second because something I've just occurred to me that has made me... Okay, hold on, wait. First, let me finish this quote and I'm going to come back. At, this is from Tisha Bartlett, the vice president of marketing at Fazoli's. At Fazoli's, our passion is for hearty, value-packed dishes that'll leave you wanting seconds. I've eaten at Fazoli's many times and never has the thought occurred to me after I finished eating Fazoli's. Boy, you know it would go down right now. Real smooth. <laughs> More food from Fazoli's. Now, this is the one, the point I want to make about Fazoli's and Cheesecake Factory. Fazoli's is like, we've got this special partnership where we're buying Italian cream cake from Cheesecake Factory, and then you can buy that here. Cool. Guarantee Cheesecake Factory does not have a reciprocal item on their menu. This is there what is saying. no way Guys, that I, Cheesecake Factory, this is what I'm saying. I just think it's sad. It's a one way, it's a one way thing. And um, every time they come pick up a cake, they just leave a basket of breadsticks on the counter. If you want one, they're free. If you want <laughs> one. They're free, guys. No, they're that's, free. yeah. We get that. Yeah, you can use it to stir your coffee. Just get them out of here. I don't Please. care. It's so embarrassing. This, we, we're they getting are. a lot of ratatouilles in here. <laughs> if you would take the breadsticks with you, please. You guys are talking about business deals like they are a hostage exchange that is taking place between Fazoli's and the Cheesecake Factory. Mm -hmm. No, I'm saying it's sad that Fazoli's has to get in touch with its Italian roots by buying cake from Cheesecake yeah. Factory, and Cheesecake Factory can can't can't even give them the fucking dignity of saying like our baked ziti is made. The wizards, you know, our paisanos over at Fazoli's made us this special, you know, yeah. Italian thing, and it's yeah. direct from their recipe. That you, there's no way. It's is sad. It makes me sad. Cheesecake yeah. Factory is the big brother beating the bosses for Fazoli's playing a video game, and the Fazoli's yeah. is going to be like, and we beat it together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just so sad. It's so sad. Fazoli's, Fazoli's to get you to come there has to say we we don't worry. We got food from a better restaurant. We didn't make it. We didn't make it. Don't it's worry. Not us. We it's didn't not make it. it. We didn't make it. We got. We went to a better place. So if you don't know here. where to get Cheesecake Factory, you know how this <laughs> market is too small to support a Cheesecake Factory. We're <laughs> half a mile closer to you than Cheesecake Factory is. Save yourself some time, guys. There's no cheesecake back in Huntington. This is my shot at the big time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Where are they getting it? Hold on. I wanna, I wanna, 
I want to be able to just sit and pretend for a second that I'm in a cheesecake factory. This is where we set up just one cheesecake factory booth in the back corner of Fazoli's. It's we'll just close the door. <laughs> The usual table, Mr. McElroy? I, yes. I go in before, and I give him $100 to say yeah. welcome to Cheesecake Factory when yeah. I come in. You've printed out name tags that say Cheesecake Factory, and they have to reverse whenever they come to you. <laughs> and I'll usually go through a few menu items. Like, uh, I'll have the uh, the steak Alfredo. They're like, we don't have that that today, mm-hmm. sir. Oh, it's sold out. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I'll just have the uh, Southwest ha- egg rolls. Half a Southwest egg rolls. No, mm, maybe a half bowl of dry spaghetti and cold slice of pizza, please. And of course, the <laughs> my beloved, the usual, <laughs> the usual. It's sad. I'm just saying, Cheesecake Factory. If you're listening. Sad. Do him a favor. Do you want me to make your cheesecakes for you? Cheesecake, like I get Fazoli's. I'll come teach you how to make a cheesecake just, if you want. What sucks is that there's a place called the Macaroni Grill. There's yeah. a place called Carabas. Either one of these would have, honestly, if they had said they got it from Olive Garden, any three of those would have trucked more weight with me in terms of getting in touch with their Italian roots. Like, right. Fazoli's obviously isn't Italian, but I think it's about right that Fazoli's is like, no, but we know some Italian restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> like, we do know, we know of them. They're like, like cousin we... in, in the bear, you know? He hangs yeah. out with a lot of Italians. Right, yes, fine. exactly. Yeah. Fazoli's is the cousin. Yeah, it's cousin. Italian. Don't worry about it. He's the cousin Richie of Italian dining. Yeah. I know, Fazoli's is the fact. But, but, yes. <laughs> but, yes. but, thanks so much for uh, hanging out with us today. We hope you have enjoyed yourselves. I my kids are snowed in, and I've very much enjoyed Edward this Snowden's? opportunity. What? Oh shit! Your kids yeah, I are left Edward them in the Snowden? car. I gotta go dig them out. <laughs> I gotta go dig them out here soon. Oh no, Travis was making an Edward Snowden joke. Oh, my kids are Snowden. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay thank yes. You. Um. Listen. Big news: the Severing Game graphic novel is now available for pre-order. Fuck what? yes. Yeah. Read dot mcmillan dot com slash the adventures that will have a better. We'll have a better link than that. Uh, but we'll, I'm sure, post it on Instagram, so make sure you're following McRoy family on Instagram. We'll have the link there. Also want you to know, not too long now, I'm going to be at Sketchfest um, Sunday, February 4th, 7 p.m., during a show uh, featuring Eugene Cordero, Erica Ishii, Aaron Keefe, Danny Fernandez, Connor Ratliff, and unfortunately, Ron Funches isn't able to make it, but Griffin Newman is now going to play with us. Um, oh, wow. It's going to be... A really it's be a wacky, good show. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, be a wild and wonderful show. 7 p.m. on February 4th. You can get your tickets at the uh, Sketchfest website. And make sure, if you haven't already, go check out MacRoyMerch.com for all the cool merch. All the cool merch. You heard it here first. Thanks to Montaigne for the use of our theme song, My Life is Better With You. Uh, I, I, I keep Montaigne on my um, Nickelodeon spin in that wax 24-7. I, I keep Montana on my emergency contact list. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, just they're there for I'm me. I'm sure they I appreciate them. that. Yeah. Wow. Um, I have this idea, by the way, for live shows. There should be a moment where we have Funglore come out and just let the audience scream their wishes at him. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's good. But right. right now, instead of that, how about we just do like a silent wish to Funglore? I think it's a great okay. idea. Begin. And if your wish was longer than that, you need to really evaluate like, how slow you in. Yeah, your greediness oh. level. He's a he's a busy guy. My or busy being. I don't know. Busy. We don't know, we don't know what fun has got happening. I just it's meant like glory. in his body. Is he of his uh, of our? I don't want to like say he's a human being. <laughs> or, yeah, sure. No, he's anything. definitely not a human being, Justin. No, no, no. My name is Justin McRoy. I'm Travis McRoy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. <laughs> well, it's, it feels so weird. We got it. I don't know. It only feels weird to you because you're a weird person. It feels normal to us. I choose. Let me tell you, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately, and there's a lot of them that just leave these silences and call it content in the show. Yeah, man. You're sure? It's, yeah. Yeah. A lot of these, a lot of the big ones are doing it. <laughs> they edit it in sometimes in the middle of a oh, I'm sorry that I gave myself word. the yips and like, I chickened out on it. So can we yeah, we'll okay. try it again? I'm just like, okay. And finally, Everyone, please make your wishes to Fungalore. 
Now, if you really did it, that was two wishes, and you fell for one of the <gasps> oldest tricks in the book. I can't fucking believe <laughs> I can't you believe all. you did it twice. That's sick. My name's we, Justin McElroy. We, to be fair, the tagline is, he heard your wish. Singular. Yeah. He did not so hear you your wish now. You, we're going right. to tell you what. We'll give you a third chance here. Tell Fungalore which of the two wishes you want, actually. Okay. Well, here's the you sign. ready? You ready? Kill Go. your darling. You didn't actually say anything, did you? You can't bother Fungalore three times in one podcast. What's you wrong with kidding you? Me? My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy, I'm I guess. Justin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother. We kiss your dad square on the lips. Maximum Fun, a worker-owned network of artist-owned shows, supported directly by you.